video in the Windows Phone 8 development tutorials. Um, I was going to do images and static and dynamic images where we can change the source of them via the code, but I have actually had a request from DN Audio 12 who has asked me if it's possible to use multiple buttons um, through one click event on a button and know which button was pressed. Now this is possible and it is a great thing to use. So what I've done here is I've made this uh, a bit speedier by starting it up and already adding our buttons. So I'm just going to quickly run through what we have here. We have a simple page, um, a new application obviously. Now I've added two buttons. The first button I've called button one on its content. I've named it button one and I've also gone into the XAML here and entered a tag. Now you literally just type tag equals and then use the speech marks to say what it is. So this one's called button tag one, uh, button one tag, sorry. And I've got a second button, which is called button two, which is button two tag. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and make these tags appear in a message box, depending on which one we've clicked. Now if we look in the events down here in the properties, you'll see that button two is set to my button click underscore click. Now if you want to make the click event lazily, you just click on one of the buttons, you type it in, you hit enter, and once you've pressed enter, it will actually generate the code for you uh, in the back end. So here you can see this is my button click underscore click. Both of the buttons are going to the same click event. So what we've got is we've got this nice little line here, which is, um, which is starting a new button, um, and it's equal to the sender as a button. Now sender is actually something that we get um, passed through on a click event. So when a button is clicked, we know that sender is the button that was actually pressed. So what we can do is we can enter something like this, which is a message box to say, here you can see my, and then we add the button tag, and then we obviously make sure it's a string, and we put it into the message box. So this code in theory, if we run up the emulator, should mean that when we press on button one, we get the button one tag, and when we press on button two, we get the button two tag. So we'll try that out now. So button one, here you can see my button one tag. That's perfect, and then number two, here you can see my button two tag. So already we've made one simple click event, which is uh, allowing us to have multiple buttons and pass them through with their tags. Now I understand that you might have a whole heap of content that you want um, generated. So you can either enter this out as one massive string and then just stop it halfway and add the button tag in as I've done here in this message box. So you could do this as a, as a normal string as well or however you like, but if you want to get a little more fancy with it, what we could do is we could incorporate a list. So here we're going to make a list string and we're going to call it my list. Right, so now that we've got that, in the main page we're going to add my list dot add and we're going to add um, this is my content when I press or when I tap on button one. Okay, and then we'll add another one. And this is gonna be when I press on button two. So again, this is just a full load of content from a list. When the page gets um, initialized, it will add these two string lines to our little uh, list here, which is a list of strings. And what we can do in the button section down here is we can do message box show. And rather than put that in there, if we add my list and then we do a square and we choose the index so we know that this is zero and this is one because when we start a list a list starts at zero it does not start at one so if we add this and we do button um well we won't do button sorry we'll do um we're going to do something called int32 and then we'll do the sender dot um sorry not sender button dot tag dot string now effectively what we've done here um, sorry, close those up properly. Right, what we've done is we've said when they press the button in the message box we want to show my list and we want to show them the content at whatever number is here. Now because button tag is technically a string, when we change it in here I'm going to change the tags, I'm going to change this to tag 1, uh, to 0 sorry because our, our content starts at 0 in an array list and then a one. So when they press on button one, they're gonna get the tag of zero, and if they click on button two, they're gonna get the tag of one. Okay, you always gotta remember that zero is included. You do not ignore zero. So now in theory, when they press on the one, 
uh, button one, it will come through here. We'll go to our button event and it will go to the list into the message box and it'll say, right, in the list box, change the button tag into an actual integer that this code can work with. So this is what this bit here is doing. This is taking our string and turning it into a number. So if you put a dog in the string line, it's not going to convert to an integer. All right. If you've just if you've got numbers in there in a string format, it can take them back into an integer. So now that we've changed our string within these tags here into a number, that number is now seated inside of the square brackets of my list. Now, when we call my list with a number, it will go to my list and it will say, right, I've got number zero. What is the data that goes with zero? Can you give me that information? So in theory, when we click on this, we should end up with this line here for button one and this line here for button two. So we'll go ahead and run the emulator. And we'll click on our button. Here you go. So this is my content when I tap on button one. And this is my content when I tap on button two. Now, I hope that code was uh, easy to understand. If you have any problems, leave me a comment. Or if you have any projects that you guys need help with, like DN Audio 12 did, then go ahead and get in touch and I'll uh, soon make a video for you. So thanks for watching my tutorials, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll speak to you next time.